So this past Christmas, Lauren's grandfather gifted me with his late 70s model Craftsman 12 inch bandsaw. It is in fantastic condition. It needs some tweaks, but um, the big thing is whenever we brought it back at Christmas time, we didn't have room for the stand. So I've been meaning to get a stand built for it, get it together, tweak it and get it up and running so I can use it in my shop. But we've been so damn busy with other projects, I just haven't gotten around to it. So we are finally gonna get this thing up and going. So I'm gonna make this whole project a scrap wood project. This is a piece of three quarter inch plywood that I'll use as the base to mount the bandsaw to. We have these pieces of two by four that have been ripped down to three inches that were from the table saw station project. You can check that out here if you're interested. I have some other miscellaneous pieces of scrap two by four that we'll use. And then I have these giant heavy duty industrial casters that were left here from the previous owners at this house and so we're going to use that way overkill for this project but they're still going to work and make it more portable before i cut anything to link i went ahead and cut all the shoulders off of my scrap two by fours i did this at the table saw cutting off a quarter inch on one side flipped it over and cut a quarter inch off the other side this made all the boards nice and square to be able to work with later I then took all the pieces over to the miter saw where I cut everything to length. Now this bandsaw utilizes an electrical motor mounted externally from the housing of the bandsaw itself in order to turn the blade. Because of the way I designed this stand, I needed to cut a hole in the platform that the bandsaw would be mounted to in order for the V-belt that connects the electric motor to the bandsaw to be able to travel. To keep the stand construction simple, I decided to use pocket holes for all the joinery of the frame pieces. I used my armor tool pocket hole jig to make all the pocket holes in these pieces. This thing is awesome by the way. If you've ever considered getting one, I highly recommend it. It makes doing pocket holes super easy and quick. The assembly was really straightforward with just a little glue and screw. But I wasn't very mindful at the beginning, so I put all the long sides together first, but then whenever I tried to do the short sides, I didn't have enough room for the driver to fit between the legs, as you can see right here. So I actually had to disassemble it and then reassemble it so that the driver would fit for all the pocket holes. Other than that, I had no issues and this thing was very solid whenever it was done. So on the original stand for this bandsaw, this motor was actually mounted on a hinge system where this top platform would actually hinge up like this in order to take tension off the belt and you could take the belt off without having to remove the whole motor. I'm gonna recreate that just using new lumber, but I do wanna use the original hardware and here's why. So the original hardware you can tell is just these decorative hinges that somebody had probably as spares and used to actually hinge this. And then you have all these different length and diameter um, flathead screws, which to me, I don't know, nobody uses flathead screws anymore. That's just kind of a sign of the time, a testament to when this thing was originally in service. So I wanna kind of keep that character and so we're gonna reuse that hardware for the new setup. <laughs>
These flathead screws were so frustrating. It's no wonder they're hardly used nowadays. I started them all with a screwdriver and finished them with a drill driver, but both ways just suck. I squared up a scrap piece of plywood similar to the top but mounted it on the bottom in order to mount all the casters to. There's still a couple more things that I need to do with the stand. However, at this point, I was starting to get some of the replacement parts in for the bandsaw, so I'll go ahead and show you what all I had to fix here. For the most part, it just needed a little TLC. A lot of the rubber washers and stuff like that were dehydrated. Um, some of the moving parts just needed some oil and grease on them. And then obviously, just a good dusting. There was sawdust inside everything, even the wiring. The two big things that needed replacement though were the upper wheel bearings and then the tires for both wheels. The upper bearings were actually completely seized up. Rather than the wheel spinning on the inner race along that upper shaft, the whole bearing itself was actually spinning around that upper shaft. You can see here that as I try to rotate this bearing around my index finger, the whole bearing's rotating. What's supposed to happen is that inner race, that metal sleeve around my index finger should be staying steady and the whole bearing spins along that race. So to install the new bearings, I just put a little bit of oil on them to help them slide in better. Then I used a flat piece of wood to hammer them down in evenly. Once the new bearings were almost fully installed, I used the old bearing to fully seat them in the hub. After taking these old bandsaw tires off, some of this glue is really stuck on these wheels. And so I'm just gonna take a uh, screwdriver and a razor blade and kind of scrape this stuff off and then uh, clean it up with a little bit of cleaner uh, to make sure it's a nice smooth surface for the new tires. So what I've read online is that the best way to put these things on because they're so tight they actually way undersized um, is to actually boil some water let it cool down just a little bit throw these in there for about three to five minutes and then stretch them over it so i'm gonna go inside boil some water bring it out here and we will get these things on hot damn Look at that, look at that. Worked like a charm. The internet isn't always wrong. So when I designed this, I figured that the weight of the motor alone on that hinge system was gonna be enough to hold the, the hinge all the way down and keep it steady. But instead, this is what I have happening. So what I'm planning on doing to fix this is basically take a piece of scrap wood and uh, cut it to length for right there. Um, that'll give a platform for the end of this to be mounted to. And then I'll mount a block to put this little clamp on and I can actually
clamp this down and keep it steady uh, whenever I'm using it.